My daddy never touched a hundred thousand cash in his life. Rest in peace his soul, but he was broke. How much you count? 10K. Damn, I only got 10. We only made 20 today, man. We gotta go harder. Money is not everything, bro. You need to relax. Money is everything. You need to go harder, you bro. Get the wheel. I'm counting money. You get the wheel. Look, it's time to make some money. Come on. Bro, it's 2.30 a.m. and I'm tired. Would you rather be rich and tired or broken and energized? Rich and tired. Okay, then get the hell out. Come on, man. No girls, no parties, no vacations, no distractions. Let's lock in on our dream. Don't chase girls, chase money. Because when you get money, girls gonna chase you. My grandma been telling me that since I was a youngin'. I'm just starting to listen now. Come on, run the throat in the track to get this money. We can do it, so let's do it. Come on, dog. It's about time. I need money. What the hell happened that money became everything? What happened? Because it was not in the 70s. In the 70s, it's how cool is your job? How cool is it what you're doing? If your job's cooler than my job, you beat me. And no one said, how much are you making? Oh, you're doing okay. As long as you could live, who cares? And Mario Joyner explained this to me. He said, the 80s was the first time that young guys could make a lot of money fast. Yeah. Never existed before. Rich guys were Aristotle Onassis, Andrew Carnegie, shipping, iron. Yeah. You couldn't make a lot of money fast in those days. Yeah. And let, uh, some of those guys, good. Edison, Ford, you know. Yeah. All of a sudden, everybody, all sharp guys in the 80s could make a ton. And some dull guys, a lot of dull guys. Like a lot of dull guys, yeah. Could make a and lot of money. And it has poisoned our culture to this day. It's poison. I okay. Said to my kids, I, I had a bunch of people, I had a bunch of kids at, around the table last night. And I said to them, some of them are just starting to work. I said, if your work is unfulfilling, the money will be too. Yeah. You one time said, if you, if you get good at comedy, you'll get the money. Just get good at it. But it's not even the money. It's the value of expertise. I'm in a bind, Nate. Carnell Alexander is a wanted man tonight. The state of Michigan is demanding he pay thousands of dollars or go to prison. And it's all because of a child support case that has spiraled out of control. And as 7 Action News reporter Kim Russell reports, it's a case with a bizarre twist because everybody agrees the kid is not his. I feel like I'm standing in front of a brick wall with nowhere to go. Carnell Alexander is forever haunted by the big news he got in 1991 during a traffic stop in Detroit. You're a deadbeat dad, the cop said. You're a wanted man. You're coming with me. I knew I didn't have a child, so I, I was kind of blown back. Blown back and locked up. Cornell was arrested for failing to pay almost $70,000 in child support. The state said he fathered a child in 1987 and had ignored a court order to pay up. It was the first Carnell had heard of it. And when you were telling them in court... That it was not my child. He told me it was too late to get a DNA. But he did anyway, and the test proved Carnell was not the dad. Still, a judge was unmoved. She told me that regardless to the fact of what the DNA say, because I didn't contact her 24 years ago, it's going to stick. Case closed. I got to pay for the baby. What the court focused on was this. Records show Carnell ignored a court order of the paternity case in the late 1980s. Action News pieced that chain of events together. Here's what we found. The state then sent a process server to Carnell's dad's house in Highland Park. The process server was supposed to deliver to Carnell this summons. The process server then signed this summons saying that Carnell was delivered it but refused to sign it. I wasn't there so I couldn't refuse to sign. Indeed, records show Carnell had been arrested as a young man and was locked up when the process server came to the house. I had no knowledge that I had a child support case pending against me. As for why there was a case at all, someone had put Carnell's name on an application for welfare benefits, an ex who was in a jam when her baby was born. I had to turn to welfare to get assistance to take care of them, and I had to put him down as the father. That was the only way I could get assistance. While she doesn't want to show her face, this woman is now fighting to help Carnell. Everything is my fault that I put him through. Do you think that he should have to pay this money? No, he shouldn't have to pay it at all. Want everything? to go away for him so he can go on with his life. We still know it's not my child. Let's do what we need to do, what's right. A few months ago, a judge did erase the debt that Carnell owed that mom of the kid that's not his, but not the debt owed to the state, $30,000 for welfare benefits paid over the years. He says he's going to keep fighting until all of the debt is erased. Kim Russell, 7 Action News.
The amount of men, divorced men, who will fight child support tooth and nail is so wild to me. We've got a comment here. If she wants no fault divorce, she can take the kids or he can take the kids. But either way, there's no child support. Shut your bitch ass up. <laughs> you know, what sometimes happens in divorces, and I, I've seen this happen so much, is the amount of hate two people have for one another overrides the amount of love they have for their own children. If you decide to not pay your spouse child support, <clears throat> you think you're sticking it to her. You're punishing her for leaving you. I'm assuming it's her. Sometimes it's men that get child support. But do you realize that in the act of punishing your spouse, you are also punishing your children? Shut your bitch ass up! <laughs> Why would you want to harm your children? Why would you want your children to have more access and live an easier life with you and live a harder life and have less access with your spouse? Accusations. These are not accusations. This is false accusations. And I mean, are you that dead set on harming your spouse and also by proxy harming the relationship your children have with their spouse that you're going to do that? I need money. What we're hearing on this show on online, we're hearing a man's money is my money and my money is my money. I've worked 80 hours, whatever, how many hours a week while limiting myself for my family because I always have to work while you are also working mm -hmm. and you feel like you could spend that on fashion over, on personal. It does sound like a scam because we are not getting yeah, the same quality. Of, point. We're not even getting the same quality of women. And y'all can say y'all not getting the same quality of men. That's fair. A lot of women are complaining about they don't want to cook. Some women don't even know how to cook. We're not getting unlimited sex like we was promised before we got married. <laughs> like now sex is a chore. Like So we're not getting the same quality of women but we still have to provide like where we're our grandfathers and I think mm. that's where men are having an yeah. issue. I think that's why relationships are failing at the rate that they're failing. And <laughs> A lot of shit pissed me off. Like we got women complaining about not getting enough child support. Got men complaining about not making enough money and want to spend money on certain things and I just want people to understand that money isn't everything you know is is there a way that you can have too much money is there a way that you can have enough money and if you can't have enough money or too much money then you got to understand money is catch 22 you'll never have enough of it so you'll constantly constantly keep running on the rabbit uh, what is that the hamster wheel Trying to get to the damn money. And then you'll be uh, uh, wasting your life instead of enjoying your life. You know, money is very important. It's a tool that you can use to get to where you need to go. But is money so important that you're going to give up your family? Is money so important that you're going to give up for friends? Is money so important that you're going to sacrifice your morals and values? And this is the problem I have with people. People are so damn money hungry, they'll give up the family. They'll give up their friends. They'll give up being part of society just so they can keep more, more, more money. And at the end of the day, if you were trapped on a fucking mountain, you're not going to want no more cash. You're going to want some ass. You're trapped on an island. Not gonna want more cash. You want some ass. You're gonna want somebody to spend this time with. I don't get how people are so fucking money hungry where they throw away their relationships, throw away their friendship, throw away relationships with mom, relationship with their fucking dad or sister, brothers. I, I don't get it because at the end of the day, family. Friends, the people you meet on this fucking planet is more important than this little ass, feeble, rippable ass cash, flammable ass cash.
But people will sit there and sacrifice their whole friendship, their whole loved ones, their family for more and more of this green stuff that you can't even buy love with. You can't even buy happiness with. You can't even buy, you buying temporary things. Things that don't actually accumulate to anything but temporary shit. Now, your friendship could be lifelong. The love that people give you could be lifelong. You can have money lifelong, but who the fuck? Nigga, you bragged on money for 17 years straight. Ask somebody that ha- that's been having millions of dollars for 17, 15, 20 years straight, how they feel about money. They don't give a fuck about money. This is the thing. Once you have the thing, it's no longer like a need to rush and get it no more. Obviously, you niggas ain't never had no money. Because y'all constantly keep wanting it and begging and trying to slam people for it. I understand people want kingdoms. People want to reign and things. But at the end of the day, if you're going to give up friendships, your moral compass and family for some green that you're probably not never going to get enough of, you're never going to get enough green. So respect your family, love your friends, love the people around you. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're constantly going for this green, it's not going to make you happy. You're going to get a temporary happiness for driving a nice car, wearing some nice clothes, going on a nice beach, going on a nice uh, cruise. And after that, Money ain't shit, my nigga. It's who you spending your money with now. It's who you spending your life with now. But it is what it is, man. People want to throw money on a pedestal and say, fuck everything else. People want to throw money on a pedestal and say they don't need family or they don't need friends or they feel like they don't uh, need even associates to even get through this life. I feel like people are crazy as hell to think this. But it is what it is. You can't change some people. And people need to understand that money can control you. Don't let it. It's just a temporary greed that you're feeling. That you need to fucking put in a box somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't deal with the was it the seven deadly sins? That's one of them. Constantly being greedy. It's never going to be enough. You constantly keep on taking over territories like Rome and figure out it's never going to be enough. And even if you go for world domination, it's probably still not going to be enough. But silence is acceptance and we ain't having it. Like, comment, subscribe.